Every item used in this video can be found in my Amazon store. Please check out the description and click on the links below. I have the full wiring layout for how I did this boat. And this is the best wiring layout that I have, period. Also got fairly good at this whole like animated thing, like diagram thing. And so really I can show you step by step how everything flows, how everything works, why I ran wires, how I went. So I mean, the, one of the biggest things is like people see the convolution of the wires and they freak out. This is showing you how they ran, why they ran that way and why it's not hard at all to wire your own boat. And this, this same feature though, it's specifically tailored toward a boat will apply for a car, will apply for essentially anything. Um, we're using all marine grade hardware and uh, fittings and everything else. And I just can't wait to show this all to you. Check it out right now. Really quick tutorial for those who are just learning about how kind of that the power of the wiring the circuits work. You need a battery or a generator or an outlet of some sort, something generating power coming out from one side. And the circ I mean, the red generally represents the positive or power end going to the accessory or the lighting. And then to complete the circuit, you need a ground end. And it has to go in this flow. Okay, this it has to complete the circuit in such a way. Now the ground end has a little bit more play, so as long as it reaches something that conducts the electricity, you can complete the circuit. But you can't do that with the positive end. The positive end needs to be attached to uh, a power source or you just don't get it. Remember, the power is always supposed to flow through the one end. So trying to reverse the circuit is very unsafe and I strongly uh, recommend against that experiment or doing anything like that. Do you remember how it flows? We will later talk about ways to interrupt the current with switches to control your accessories and lights as well as ways to fuse and safeguard your stuff from uh, any kind of fails or fires. I used Anchor Marine Grade products. This is their wire. This is 14 gauge wire. This is what I have left to show you. This is actual true Marine Grade wire. Look at the thickness. Okay, look at the thickness of the sleeve. And this is not Marine Grade wire. Okay, look how thin the sleeve is, the, the coating. And obviously this is tin copper versus standard copper. So any piece of wire has a bunch of copper strands running through it. Now when the wire is in use and electricity is going through it and it's exposed to moisture, it starts to corrode rather quickly, very quickly, and it'll start to turn green. And once those strands start to become green, they start to become useless and not actually conduct electricity anymore. So you start to see your diameter of wire actually start to shrink from whatever it was, 10 gauge, 12 gauge, 14 gauge, all the way down to lower. And that's where you start getting fires because whatever unit it was hooked to was meant for a 14 gauge, but it's only running off 22 gauge of wire. And then you just, you see your entire wire deteriorate. That's where you start seeing shorts, a melting, deteriorated color in the coating, you know, bad stuff, fires. But when you uh, tin the copper and you increase the toughness of the coating, it changes the game. So when it's exposed to moisture while electricity is going through it, it's not going to stay non-corroded forever, but it does resist corrosion rather well. And then we use marine grade connectors with shrink wrap that wrap around the wire if you're not already wrapping standard connectors and shrink wrap to do it. But we're going to show you a few examples of marine grade shrink uh, butt connectors and terminal connectors right now. Watertight heat shrinking butt connectors. Uh, they crimp and then you take a lighter and we're going to demonstrate this here a little bit. One. We also got a bunch of terminals with the exact same shrink wrap ended butt connectors. These are all marine grade stuff. We also use these. These are actually exceptionally awesome. These are um, low temp solder heating tubes. I'll show you how these work also. This is a pack of 25 five amp fuses. Five amp fuses are actually very hard to find out in like the general public. You kind of have to special order them. I have a link for these down in my Amazon store as well. Check them out. Though I didn't use this, I did purchase this is the Blue Sea Systems bus bar. And this is a full marine grade bus bar. This is a tin plated copper bus. The tin copper, Definitely a big must. It's, it's definitely a big, big deal um, in marine grade applications. These are the types of switches I was using. I was using a three prong, and I'll show you exactly how these work in my animated schematic. You can also just run a two prong, which is even simpler. But I made my own custom switch panel. I'll have to show you in, another, in a different video that I'll also link here somewhere. Because I also have a playlist on all my electronic stuff. Dielectric grease for all the areas that uh, shrink wrap and everything else can't cover. So it really goes a long way in terms of weatherproofing and water and almost waterproofing stuff too. So you put the wires in past the point here. So they intercross in that solder section. That's a low temp solder section. 
And so once they're crossed in like that, you want them crossed. You want the wires past the blue point. You don't want to cut so much wire off that it's like hanging. You really want the sleeve past the blue, the, the coating. You can get a heat gun. There's a super gun that works the best on these and I'll link that down here if you really want it, but I'm going to use a very long Bic lighter. What I'm going to do is I'm going to heat shrink the end first. That's like important because if you don't do that, then I swear the solder will start to run down the tube and you'll see it. And I've done that. So now that you know, you need to do the ends first. That way the middle is, is left very tight and the solder can't shrink or fly down the rest anywhere. Now all you have left is a solder. And you just make sure if you don't have a lighter, you need to make sure that you have equal heating on each side. Right now this, this flame engulfs the entire thing. You see the solder shrink? I don't know if you can see it shrink. That's getting in there. And so that's done. I don't know. This camera is sucks so bad. Let me see. But you can see. With that solder clearly, clearly meshed in with the wires. That's a pretty genius stuff. That is really, really high temp um, shrink wrap. I swear, it barely scorches. And I had that thing in the flame for a minute. But you can tell where the, the low temp solder ring, how it's all nice and perfect to where it uh, definitely melted. All right, so it. for people who saw those uh, low temp solder connectors and weren't too crazy about those, you can get um, heat shrink uh, terminal and butt connectors all day. Um, you can get them down here in the link description in my, in, in my video, or you can, I think, find them in AutoZone, too, as well. So it's the same purpose as a solder. It's just a piece of metal wrapping around the two wires to give it uh, the best, you know, connection possible. And then we shrink wrap around the wires once they're secure, securely crimped. We go around each end, like so, until it shrinks around the wire, like so. And that's just as good as the other connector. It's just a matter of preference, but I wanted to show you guys both ones. That's marine grade coating. Took a minute. A little bit of scorching on the bottom. This is standard coating. So this is a little bit more durable in terms of heat resistance. A little bit better. I mean, the, the standard for marine grade is serious. There are specific standards that marine grade stuff has to, to meet in order for it to classify as marine grade versus standard grade stuff. Okay, so this is my boat sketch layout. It's almost verbatim what it's like, but it's just a very quick sketch to show you how I have it. Um, I have one main uh, section for all the wiring. That's all right here. And you can see it all just kind of clustered there. So that's where all the main circuits and the uh, bus bars and everything are. And right here is we're running uh, six gauge wire for all the trolling motors. I'm running forward and aft trolling motors um, and plugs and sections. And then right there in a battery box where I, I can either run a 24 or 36 volt system. And right here where we have the main cluster is where we have all the wires running in through the, uh, the fuse block and the bus bar into the switch panel. Now this is a Blue Sea Systems uh, diagram for their bus bar. I think it's awesome. It's a 12 gang run everything, run all your stuff off of just one setup. Very, very nice and easy to access. It's, it's very nice. But just really there's a, you run a power end, you run a ground end. I recommend eight gauge wire minimum from your battery. And then literally it just, all your other wires, all your power and all your grounds, it just, for every power and fuse setup, it has a ground setup right underneath it. And I ran all five amp fuses for 14 gauge wire plus two amp fuses for the fish finder stuff as that's what was recommended. I made my own switch panel this time. That's a custom switch panel with just switches I bought. And these are the switches that I use. They're just like three gang switches. So no more four or five gang switches where you have to play musical wires and blow a bunch of fuses to figure out what the, the layout is. I'm tired of that crap. These are easy. They're all the same. One positive in and out plus a ground to give you an extra LED light light up if you want the light. I didn't really care about the light, didn't use it. But anyways, from that switch, I ran the power in, as you see, into one prong and then out the other positive prong. I ran it all to the accessories, to the bilge, to the recirc, to the aerator, to the LEDs, to the nav lights, to anything that required power and a switch to control it. And then I have the green wires just for demonstration to the live wall timers because you can also run those to the recirc and aerator pumps as well. But it all completes one circuit as you're viewing here very nicely. 
worked like a boss. It's charm, and then everything is super accessible. I'll show it to you here in a little bit. But all these wiring clusters, I used um, red and yellow wiring, yellow for the ground this time. The blue on the diagram here represents where I put all the lights everywhere. So I have a ton of lights everywhere. The light green area represents kind of the accessories, the bilge and the research pumps. So you can see how all lights, I stuck lights everywhere. Super crucial for uh, what I got going on here. I need them for the night. It, it changes your entire experience, especially when you're filming. I, and here's where the pumps are again. The bilge, research and aerator pumps. And then here is where the six gauge wire is ran to the plugs for both forward and aft trolling motors. I just have a, trolley, a 24 volt system for both 24 volt trolling motors forward and aft and then I have a completely separate 12 volt battery in the corner to isolate for all my power items. All power to my accessory items are controlled by a main on and off master switch which makes everything much easier and safer to run in this whole setup. All right, we're gonna go in here. We're gonna give ourselves power. Hawa. Let's give ourselves a little bit of light here. That way we can actually see what we're doing. My rod locker is all lit up. And although it is extremely annoying, um, I was supposed to have two of these that are white to flood in here, but I, I don't know, I'll replace this one eventually. They sent me an orange one. Not quite a fan of that, but. Okay, front nav, and the rear nav, They're pushing in water pretty well. This thing is almost done, Ski. It literally drained the time we were talking. That was very, very quick. That's a thousand pound, yeah, that's a thousand gallon per hour a bilge. That thing just empties water. Check out my other stuff, guys. If you're active on YouTube, subscribe. Uh, I got a bunch of other stuff coming out. Thank you very much, everybody. People, my fans, audience, patrons, I love you all. I'll see you all out there.